Dear fellow colleagues, first let me introduce ourselves. We are Amos Fernandez, Iván Guerrero and I'm Jesus González. All of us are students at the University of León. This video will deal with the classification of land cover and land use using cash image and leader data. The inventory and mapping of urban areas is very important to the management of different administrations. Therefore, updating this inventory and urban area maps is highly relevant. The main goal of this project is to map and classify the study area using CASI and LIDAR data as well as the analysis of the fusion between these kinds of data. The combination of both datasets, CASI and LIDAR, offers the potential for data mapping and monitoring of materials based on their spectral and structural characteristics. Firstly, we will start by talking about the study area. The study area is located in the southern part of the United States of America, specifically Houston, Texas. Our study's main goals and concerns to map and classify the study area using CASI and LIDAR images. To obtain the classification, three different algorithms were used, spectral angle mapper, linear spectral and mixing, and maximum likelihood. Also, the fusion of CASI imagery and LIDAR data was analyzed. We had a CASI image with 144 bands, with a spatial resolution of 1 meter and a half and a spectral width of 380 nanometers to 1050 nanometers. The acquisition was made on the 23rd of June 2012. The flying height was 1675 meters. Due to the presence of clouds at the time of acquisitions, the image has areas where cloud shadow is present. The later data consisted of a digital surface model containing the elevation of the land and urban elements above the geoid 2012A. The data were acquired on the 22nd of June 2012. The training and validation samples, known also as regions of interest, was supplied for the study area. A table with the number of pixels of each class is shown. MB was used as the main software in order to develop this study. An archist stem from Nesri was used to create and edit the mask for the final map results. The classes required in this study were Water, Parking Lot 1, Parking Lot 2, Trees, Highway, Road, Commercial, Healthy Grass, Stress Grass, Synthetic Grass, running truck, tennis court, residential, soil, and railway. The input data had to be prepared before getting the results from them. The CASI image was atmospherically corrected by the flash algorithm in order to obtain surface reflectance. Then, the normalized difference vegetation index was calculated. This index was chosen for its ease of application. It was spread, use and niche in differentiating the vegetation from the rest of urban elements in the image. Then, the dimensionality of the image was reduced. For this transformation, the minimum noise fraction of the corrected image was used, which was later added to the normalized difference vegetation index. The aim of this process was the reduction of noise content, decreasing the volume of bands with redundant information. Afterwards, a segmentation of the image was made using the shadow mask. This mask was made to separate the areas of the image without shadows from the areas with cloud shadows. In the areas with shadows, a correction was applied. This correction was performed as follows. The values of a given material for areas with and without shadows were observed. A ratio between them was calculated, and thus a coefficient that could be multiplied with the shadow image was obtained. This coefficient was obtained by observing the light material and dark material. An average between the two was calculated. This allowed the image without the shadow to be unified with the corrected image that contained the shadow. 
From the LiDAR data, digital surface model, different masks were applied to separate the different elements present the image according to their heights. There were four masks. One for the data with an elevation less than or equal to 14 feet. One for the data higher than 14 feet and less than or equal to 18 feet. Another for data over 18 feet and under 21 feet. And a final data mask for data greater than or equal to 21 feet. To perform a supervised classification, you need to have a selection of training areas. For this study, those areas had already been provided. Therefore, we proceeded to select which bounds or indexes belonged to each feature class. The study of the superability concluded that the superability of the bounds was elevated. The first algorithm used was the spectral angle map. This algorithm determines the similarity of the two spectra and calculates the angle between them. The second algorithm used was linear spectral mixing. The linear spectral mixing is an algorithm based on the subpixel classification. This is based on the fact that the reflectance obtained by the sensor is a mixture of signal belonging to different pure categories. Finally, the third algorithm selected was maximum likelihood. This algorithm calculates the probability of membership of a pixel to every class, assigning it to the class in which probability of membership is the greatest. After the classification, a validation of all the classifications was necessary to determine the veracity for each classification. Due to this reason, it was necessary to obtain the ground truth, which, like the training areas, were provided. By contrasting areas of the ground truths with the same areas in the classified image, we obtain a high confusion matrix for each classification. The different inaccuracies were obtained by the confusion matrix for each of the classification algorithms. Also, the confidence intervals for the adjusted wall method of the user and producer accuracies was calculated to delimit its drift. The kappa coefficient was obtained from the confusion matrix. This indicates the success of the classification methodology instead of the random classification. Once all the above procedures, the classified images were obtained by applying the above algorithms a methodology for image segmentation and blinding. The classification algorithm spectral angle mapper was applied to obtain a final map, which is shown next. The kappa value indicates about 34% of increase in accuracy when performing this classification method that if it were processed randomly. From the linear spectral and mixing was obtained a final classification map for each class of information. Those are the result of the algorithms. Water, parking lot 1, parking lot 2, 3, highway, commercial, healthy grass, stressed grass, synthetic grass, running track, tennis court, residential, soil, and finally, railway. The kappa coefficient indicates that it has about 20% of chance of more success at the time to sort through this method than with a random classification. At last, the classification algorithm maximum likelihood was applied to obtain a final map, which is so next. With this method, the kappa obtained was 40.45% and this is the best value obtained in this study. The kappa value should be greater than 0.6 to qualify the classifications as good. So, the kappa obtained in the different classifications are far from that minimum value. Then, it proceeded to make the same classifications but without using masks of heights. These classifications were made with the same training and validation areas for comparison with the classifications obtained by data fusion. We observe a 40.35% of improvement in applying the spectral angle mapper using data fusion. For linear spectral mixing only presents about 80% of improvement. 
and maximum likelihood algorithm improved at 74.78% by adding data LiDAR in the classification. Once the project had been finished, we have reached a number of conclusions presented below. The high complexity of urban areas classification makes essential to find and test different classification algorithms. The algorithms have been implemented in this study have a scope for improvement in terms of its implementations and results. Accuracy of our results depends on the accuracy of the original data. The low kappa values for all classification obtained could improve with a greater and more adequate sampling of the areas of training and validation. The use of more advanced classification techniques such as semi-automatic object detection or using decision tree classificators would improve the classification of the study area. Land cover and land use classes have left an additional complexity due to the excessive level of detail which is difficult to determine it only working on the visible and near infrared range. Grouping classes in order general ones could help in order to obtain better classifications. The presence of shaded areas in the image difficult the correct classification because the amount of energy recorded by the sensor is much smaller and noisy on these areas. Finally, note importance and good results which are being obtained on cover classifications applying data fusion techniques, evident and increasingly widespread use of multi-sensor techniques. To conclude, thank you for your attention.